Welcome to The Conspiracy Show. My name is Richard Serrett. Crop circles are elaborate designs consisting of several interconnecting geometric shapes usually found in farmers' fields where the crop has been flattened. Now, some people believe crop circles are communications from extraterrestrials. Others believe they are produced by some unknown natural energy that creates these complex ground patterns. But in the early 90s, two self-professed hoaxsters from England came forward and claimed they'd been making crop circles with simple hand tools since 1978. So what's the truth? Tonight we'll meet several circle chasers who affirm that the scientific data proves, if nothing else, these enigmatic complex patterns remain one of the most awesome and tangible mysteries of our time. We'll also meet a member of the Committee for a Skeptical Inquiry who insists that these investigators' claims are hypothetical pseudoscience. Me? I just want the truth, and I'm willing to follow it wherever it may lead. It is time to redefine reality. Genetic enigma or a human alien hybrid. That's how cynical I am now about the process. Is it possible technology can tell? We're going to make it go. We're going to make it go. It has been engineered by the Illuminati. There's no doubt. I'm here just outside Philadelphia with filmmaker, crop circle researcher Jennifer Stein. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome to the Conspiracy Show. Thank you so much. How would you describe a crop circle to someone who's never seen one? Oh, gosh. An amazing experience. Um, an impression in the crop where the wheat is laid down almost as if it's steamed into place in an amazing geometric pattern. And you can really only understand it and see its geometry from the air. They're usually huge and highly complex. And it's a phenomenon that, you know, people are interested in UFOs and other phenomenon, ghosts and things like that. But a crop circle is a tangible thing. It exists, it's on the ground, it's a phenomenon you can walk into, you can research, you can dig up the soil, you can look at the crops, you know, look at the plants under a microscope. So it's a more researchable phenomenon as well. If you're very, very lucky and you're able to get to a brand new crop circle, the plants are bent about an inch above the soil to the point where the seed heads are just levitating above the soil. They used nature's own mathematical ratio, which is the golden ratio. So it has a very unique shape, almost like the kind of shape you find on a, a shell on the beach. And the other beautiful thing about the, the uh, genuine phenomenon is that the plants appear to have been laid as if they were laid in a uh, display case in a museum. Everything is meticulously arranged without any damage, usually with a slight undulation to it, like a sine wave in music. So it's, uh, it's almost like walking on poetry. Some of them are extremely large. The football field size area of geometrically flattened crop is not unusual. Is there, was there, a particular crop formation that you were particularly intrigued with? Well, the Triple Julia set was, uh, of the mid-90s, was uh, so amazing. It just, you know, they just blow you away. They're so beautiful, they're so intricate, and they're so obviously transcendental that you just become totally bedazzled. So I, there was definitely a handful of them beyond any ability to put into words how you would feel about how wonderful they were. They just took your breath away. How far back do sightings or accounts of crop circles go? We have events that were witnessed by police in Britain in the 1920s. Uh, we have events that were witnessed by postal workers, uh, agrarians, uh, military personnel in 1890. And we even have a report that goes back to uh, 1670 in the Natural uh, History of Staffordshire in England. And back then they were talking about witches' circles and devil's rings. But they actually meticulously recorded the same details and evidence that we found in the crop circles in the modern era. Since the government cannot um, hide them, they're out there, they can't control what's ever happening in the crop circles, the best way to control it in plain sight is to debunk it.
Justin Trottier is the executive director for the Center for Inquiry. Justin, welcome to The Conspiracy Show. It's nice to be back on. Thank you. The two famous self-professed hoaxers that came forward in England in the early 90s, Doug and Dave, yeah. claimed that they were making crop circles with simple homemade tools. I think when you mention Doug and Dave, that's really important is to realize that even at the beginning of the whole phenomenon, the two individuals that sparked the whole craze, they came out and admitted it was a hoax. And many others who have fooled the populace, who have fooled farmers, who have fooled even the media and gotten a lot of attention, frankly money out of, the, out of that fame, have come forward and admitted that it was a hoax. You don't believe that Doug and Dave are responsible for most of these crop circles? Absolutely not. I'm sure they did uh, five, ten, you know, ten of them, but if you look at a Doug and Dave circle or any of the other uh, hoaxers that put up their hands and said, hey, we're hoaxers, which there was quite a few after them, the crop circles are impressive from a distance, but not when you get up close and have a good look. Doug and Dave cannot create changes in standing crop. You know, when Doug and Dave flatten a crop with a board, you can see the markers. You can dig up the soil and you can see that there's no soil changes in the formations that they have made. We're also seeing skeptical inquirers, so to speak, like uh, Joe Nickel, for example, who have actually gone out and produced uh, crop designs that have looked just like the ones that are supposedly the real deal created by uh, these, these uh, freak phenomena or alien visitations or what have you. So if you were to go out into a field, uh, and uh, believe it or not, grown men do go into a field uh, with planks of wood and garden rollers. I kid you not. And the moment you actually do that to plants, you're going to crease them at the very base. Uh, and that's the defining thing between uh, genuine and man-made. The ones that are hoaxed tend to have bruise marks. The laid crop has bruise marks on it, or it's squished, or it's torn. There's crop torn out of the ground. There's just damage that isn't immediately obvious, but any researcher that has any experience and takes the time can find it fairly quickly. You get the sense from the media that this is a whole joke perpetuated by two drunken guys uh, that came out of a pub one evening. The thing is, they were regurgitating information that had been published at the time. What they didn't know is that most of the research had never been published and it showed that the phenomenon is much older than we care to believe. You've stated that British intelligence, MI5, attempted to quell public interest in crop circles at one point. What was their motive? <laughs> I think they're just like us. They want to know what's behind it. Uh, certainly the question was raised in Parliament. Certainly a lot of money from the taxpayer was used to keep the crop circles under surveillance, even after the whole Doug and Dave debacle came out, which we now know and can prove came from a fictitious press agency that was created by the British Ministry of Defence. There's enough evidence going back 20 or 25 years to suggest that uh, certain um, press agencies, fake press agencies were set up to distribute stories. You know, the usual planted stories, the same as in the UFO tradition. It was created by a media company in Britain and then that media company folded and doesn't exist anymore. So whoever created the Doug and Dave story, I think had a deliberate intent to take media off the track of seriously looking at the crop circle phenomenon. But the whole Doug and Dave thing situation was created by the government or a, a branch of the government to basically keep the uh, level of excitement in the population about the crop circles down as much as possible to give the government as much time as possible to research it on their own terms. Uh, not dissimilar to the way that UFO uh, researched as well. If there's any correlation between the UFO phenomenon and the crop circle phenomenon, I would imagine that the same bait and switch type of propaganda is being exploited in this way. Since the government cannot um, hide them, they're out there, they can't control what's ever happening in the crop circles, the best way to control it in plain sight is to debunk it. Intelligence agencies react with fear rather than with wonder, like the, as the rest of us do. We know that so-called experts can't tell the difference. To me, it seems obvious that even those few in which we don't know the reality hoax or potentially something else, it makes more sense that they are 
caused by humans rather than aliens that have come a great distance just to make some really interesting images and then have flown away without a trace. Only when you actually experience one for yourself will you realize that you have a religious experience. And I used to be an atheist before I agreed and got involved in this phenomenon. And now I know differently. Are the designs of these crop swirls changing, evolving over time? Oh, very much so. They began as simple circles, circles with rings. And after the development of straight lines, then we began to get pictograms. And after that, by the time we get to the mid-1990s, now we're seeing fractal patterns. There's an aspect of fractal mathematics which is often played out or described in the fields. And as the years went by, they got much, much more complicated. And the biggest, I believe, is 1.6 acres of flattened crop. If they just gone into the middle of a field and etched on it, I am from Mars, we just laugh at it. But by making these symbols mysterious, mathematical, geometrical, and of course our cells are geometrical, we respond to that geometry, and we like a good mystery, so we're going to inquire about it. But eventually they'll leave it up to us to find out and argue over, which of course we do. Talk to me some more about the physical characteristics of the plants inside the crop circle and how they differ from their neighbors outside the crop circle. The plants appear to have been bent uh, by a non-mechanical force, uh, which leaves no physical impact on the plants themselves. So you have to actually uh, allow for the idea that something that is non-physical is coming into contact with it. That's the main feature. So I figured is there another answer to this? Is there something else along the frequency spectrum that could create these effects? And when I began to look at sound, both above and below the human hearing range, I was able to find the same series of effects that can be caused on natural substances like plants. If you ally infrasound with five atmospheres of pressure, you are able to send a very low frequency through a tube filled with water, which is essentially what a plant is, and you can boil the water in that plant in one nanosecond, and it's been proved at Princeton University. And that's what we find in the genuine circles. Even all the way back into 1680, when the uh, uh, director of the Ashmolean said, when you break these plants apart and you smell them, they smell as if they've been baked on the inside. And that's what we find now. The cell walls of the nodes of the plant, the nodes are like your knuckles on your finger, the cell walls are expanded. Uh, as if by, Dr. Levengood thinks, microwave energy. There are very specific and unique changes that happen in formations that seem to be made by some plasma or electromagnetic energy that hits the fields that changes the components of these types of characteristics. You see expulsion cavities and blown nodes where steam expels out the side because it heats up and it needs to escape somewhere. Uh, you find micron iron sized balls in the soil and you can drag a magnet across the soil and the soil will stick to the magnet. You don't find this in Doug and Dave formations. Well I looked into some of these reports and I'm not sure how um, comprehensive they are. I feel like until we actually have good solid science and replication of these kinds of tests, it's, it's hard to it's hard to actually conclude that there's anything to them. Freddie, take me inside a crop circle. Give me the whole five senses. What am I gonna see, smell, hear, feel? Oh, um, there are many levels of uh, experience with a crop circle and I had no idea until I got directly involved in this. I, I'd only heard information uh, third hand. Uh, it, only when you actually experience one for yourself will you realize that you're having a religious experience. And I used to be an atheist before I got involved in this phenomenon and now I know differently. Maybe it's like an energy vortex you step into. I don't know for sure, but personally I have had the most amazing precognitive you know, synchronistic events that have occurred. So I think there's some connection there with time and space that we don't yet understand that gets a little distorted or speeded up with crop circle research. And that's another like deep personal experience. Right, or, or the experience, they say that they've experienced a sense of, of feeling ill or, or ill at ease or something like that. I mean, these are subjective experiences, uh, individuals that know that they're in a space that's supposedly holy or supposedly paranormal will often have those reports. It's, it's a standard kind of placebo effect explanation, which I think is readily, uh, readily apparent in those kinds of cases. It always seems to inspire people in, uh, in a spiritual manner 
to any number of activities, which may just be, you know, meditation, contemplation of the unseen realities that surround us. I don't see any, uh, even the hoaxers who are, you know, some of them are quite egotistical. They aren't. They, when you talk to them, they're quite inspired. They love doing what they're doing and they'll, they'll, they'll say, oh, well, I hoaxed that one. But th they take great pride in their hoaxing, you know. To me, it just suggests strongly that these are made carefully planned and executed ahead of time with a lot of thought we are being communicated with. No question. Who or what do you think is or might be responsible for these formations? Wow, that is the million dollar question. And boy, if, if I knew that, um, you know, I'd certainly be sharing that with the world. After many years of research, I have come to suspect certain things, but I can't prove it. It's a, it's a part of history now, but Dr. Terence Meaden in the early 90s, when uh, the crop circles were essentially simple circles or simple rings, um, he developed some theories about uh, uh, scientifically explainable ways that they might be caused in a, by weather, by updrafts of wind or, you know, uh, small roaming tornadoes or whatever he called them at the time. And he was quite strong on that and had sounded very convincing when he spoke of it. Well, I think the crop circles that are less um, obviously designed, that are simply roughly circular in appearance, that those may have been caused by things that are natural like uh, weather phenomena, just uh, uh, you know, taking out a roughly circular patch of, of crop. But it only worked when they were simple. When they got complex, which was as, as early as 91, with you know, squares and rectangles and little things shooting off, and uh, the theory fell apart. Ultimately, is this a, a mystery that, that can and will be solved? I mean, are these clues that are being left for, for us uh, leading us somewhere? I think they are, and I think that the fact that people have already been used to figure out technological blueprints, which are helping us to understand lighter than, air, uh, lighter than gravity technology, uh, is one clue. Uh, I think that the people, 800 people who have actually experienced some form of healing in crop circles, or by looking at the pictures of crop circles, suggests that there's some energy at work, which is of great benefit to society. You can't deny that there appears to be a message. Maybe someone who has access to this type of technology is messing around with us. Possibly it's an alien intelligence speaking to us. But they are a group consciousness that keeps popping up in Earth's history, usually associated with periods of temple building around the world. And they go by different names in different parts of the world. In the Christian mythology, they call them guardian angels. In Egypt, they call them the watchers. And I know it's a long stretch to go that far. It's quite possible that someone on another level of reality is trying to interact with us in a very intimate way to get us to move along. So maybe there are things we don't understand yet about the dimensional relationship of our world. To me it just suggests strongly that these are made carefully planned and executed ahead of time with a lot of thought to communicate uh, certain ideas to us from the non-visible world. We are being communicated with, no question. This one, I think, is closer to the case closed than some of the other paranormal issues um, that I've explored. Uh, I do think this one has a lot of evidence, overwhelming evidence, of, of the vast majority, perhaps all, of the cases of crop circles being caused by human ingenuity. So to me, it's human ingenuity that's worth exploring. I'm amazed, again, by how elaborate the projects are that the human mind can, can put itself towards and I think that's worth continuing to investigate. There's no doubt that some crop circles are probably fraudulent, but I have a hard time believing that these immense, intricate designs, some of them resembling mathematical fractals, could be made by human hands. The plants found within crop circles have dramatically different physical characteristics than their neighbors outside the crop circle. 
The plant stems are of increased size, as if subjected to intense heat. The seeds taken from within the crop circle are noticeably smaller, and yet the crop yield inside the crop circles is 30 to 40 percent higher in one instance. Researchers and other observers who enter into a crop circle have reported feeling ill and hearing an odd trilling sound. To date, no man-made crop swirl has been able to duplicate any of these strange phenomena. Are these alien signposts? Are they manifestations of some mysterious energy force? Whatever they are, they remain at odds with modern science and one of the most baffling mysteries of our time. And now, I'd like to know what you think. You can contact us here at The Conspiracy Show through our website, www.theconspiracyshow.com. In the meantime, don't be afraid. <laughs>